This is Chaplain Dell. Good morning. Happy Easter Day. It is a wonderful thing. And just remember, and a child shall lead us. I loved Easter as a young fella. I'm going to take you back to the 1950s when I was just a little fella. I had a brother living at home and my sister, who was 11 years my junior, that was Marin. My brother's name was Barry. We lived in the old homestead at 867 Van Duzer Street, which was on the corner of Irving Place in Stapleton. My family belonged to the Vanderbilt Avenue Moravian Church, which was on Vanderbilt Avenue. My father belonged to it, my grandfather and my great-grandfather. It was a great time, great time right after World War II. Well, I couldn't wait for Easter. Uh, I can remember sitting with my mother, putting the eggs in the little dye cups that she had on the uh, kitchen table and using that little metal thing to pull the eggs out and put them on the napkins to dry or whatever else. But Easter was a special time for us. It really was. Because we knew what was going to happen on Easter morning when God rose. Well, we were very fortunate because my parents would always buy me a brand new suit. My brother too. A brand new suit with brown shoes and a white shirt and a tie. And we wore a fedora, my brother and I. We went to church, we wore a fedora. That's the way it was. My sister was always dressed up and refined me. She had the white shoes and the little white frilly dress with the ribbons in her hair and white gloves. Oh no, you had to wear white gloves to church. So we would leave and um, I'd walk down Irving Place to uh, past Taji Street to Vanderbilt Avenue, made a left and there was the Vanderbilt Avenue Moravian Church. A little white church similar to maybe the little house on the prairie. Not a very big church, but it was an interesting church, and I'll tell you why. There were many pews in there, whatever else. You could pack them in, maybe a hundred people, maybe a little bit more. No balcony. The organ was up on the right-hand side. But I was privileged because as a young fella, I got a chance to ring the bell. We actually had a bell that worked up in a the belfry. There was a huge two-inch rope to hang down with a big knot on it. And I would start to ring that bell. And if you held on tight, that rope would take you two and a half feet off the ground. Down you would come again. You were only supposed to ring the bell six times. But as a kid, I couldn't count. So I would ring that bell until somebody forced me to stop. Into the church we would go. Just a great thing. We had chairs lined on both sides of the church to fill the church to capacity. I went to Sunday school. And my Sunday school teacher was a gentleman by the name of Roy Green. He lived on Osgood Avenue. There was about 15 young boys uh, in this group. And Roy Green decided that uh, we should all say a poem on... Uh, Easter Sunday. I forget what my poem was. I, I'm not a very good rememberer. But one of my buddies was uh, belonged to the Jones family. The Jones family was one of the few black families in the neighborhood. Paulie and I used to play basketball together, whatever else. They had four brothers, one bigger than the other. Paulie was huge, like Rosie Greer, just a big guy. Well, he was forced to get up on the altar and say his little poem, and it started like this. You gotta imagine, he's six foot four, probably weighed 230 pounds. I am a little daffodil. Well, when he said that, the congregation just broke up laughing. Mrs. Jones stood up because she was in church every Sunday morning and said to him, Paulie, yes, ma'am, finish your poem, which he did. Of course, after the Easter service and whatever else, every, every time I saw Paulie on a basketball 
court or whatever, and he's with a bunch of his friends, I'd always say, I am a little daffodil. Paulie said, Dell, if I get my hands on you, you're in big trouble. Well, one of the big things at the church was what? The Easter egg hunt. Easter egg hunt. Members of the church would just hide those eggs next to the church, next to the church, and after service, we would all go out and try to hunt for the eggs in the big piece that the church owned next to it. After church, we went outside, said a prayer, the preacher said a prayer, and uh, there we were. Boom. Kids scrambling to find all the Easter eggs and whatever else. Well, there was a young six-year-old girl all dressed up in her Easter refinery. Her mom lifted and her dad lifted her up to put her on the wall that separated the church and that big piece of property. It was about a two and a half foot wall and placed her on her hands and knees. And then we all realized that the little girl was blind. Didn't stop her determination. She started hunting in the grass, her fingers in front of her, dragging a basket with her. And unfortunately, she wasn't finding too many Easter eggs, that's for sure, because the other kids that were there were finding them before she could. And besides, she couldn't see where they were. There was one little boy I watched, and uh, he had just running through that field and whatever else collecting. He had a whole basket full of Easter eggs, a whole basket. As he turned around, he noticed the little blind girl still feeling her way around the grass and not one, not one egg in her basket. And then it happened. Easter morning. The little boy moved over in front of the little girl who was blind and started taking eggs out of his basket and placing them in front of the little girl. The first egg she touched, she was so excited, she put it in her little woven basket and the more she crawled, the more the little boy placed an egg in front of her, not saying a word, not a sound. Before you know it, the little girl's basket was full and the little boy's basket was empty. The parents of this little girl had tears running down their face. They could not believe because when the little girl stood up, she had a basket full of eggs. It was almost too heavy for her to carry. Her dad picked her up with tears in his eyes. That's what Easter is all about. And a little child to lead them. That little boy taught us all a very good lesson Easter morning that we should carry through the rest of the year and in our lives. A little boy, six years old, who gave just like Christ gave for us and rose again on Easter morning. Well, that's my story for Easter Day. I remember that, by the way, I remember that uh, song. I, I am so happy, I am so gay. Why am I so happy? Because it's happy Easter Day. Listen, I'm not a singer, but that's the best you're going to get today. Anyway, God bless you. Remember the little boy, help somebody else out, show some love, show, show some compassion, show some understanding. And a little child shall lead them. Have a great day.